the coach does. I'm going to help you get prepared for your interview. We're going to break the interview down today. We're going to break it down into three sections. I believe that when we think about interviews, we have to think about what happens before the interview, what happens during the interview, and then what needs to happen after the interview. So there are three parts to the interview. Remember that up until this point, you have made some strides towards your job search. That's how you got the interview in the first place. You networked and you got leads to, to prospective jobs. You applied for the job and or shared your resume with the potential employer. And now you've gotten to the point where they are ready to interview you. Now, here's the first thing I want to tell you about the interview. People are so afraid to go on interviews. And I said, I don't know why. We've got to change our thinking about interviews. Interviews are amazing. They're an opportunity for you to sit down with the professional that has the opportunity to hire you. Yes, the interview is how you get hired. It's the best part. I don't know why people are afraid to go on interviews. Well, maybe maybe I understand parts of it. You know, you're meeting a stranger and they're going to ask you questions and you're not quite sure that your answers are going to be the right answers, but that's okay. That's why you have me. That's why Miss D, the job coach, is going to help you. I'm going to help you. I used to sit and listen to people answer the questions in the interview. And one of the things that I used to think was, why didn't anybody ever tell you not to say that in an interview? Yeah, that's right. I listened to people go through interviews and they were, they were uh, scared or nervous. Uh, they didn't know what to say or they said too much or they said too little. Th those are all the, the concerns that people have when they go in interviews. I get it. I, I totally get that. I totally get it. I'm with you. I'm with you. Here's how we're going to address this. We're going to make sure that we understand that the interview is a meeting between two professionals. That's right. You're a professional at something and the employer is a professional at something. And so now because they decided that they like you, they like the skills you have, they like the way you filled out your application, they like what they see so in you because they want to be sure that you are the person that they really want for the job. They want to be sure that you're going to meet the expectations of the environment, that you have the skills that are on your application, in, in, your, um, in your resume. They want to ask you questions. They want to get to know you. It's a conversation between two professionals. You guys are just going to talk to one another. You're not afraid to talk, are you? Well, I know why you might be afraid to talk. You might be afraid you're going to say the wrong thing. Well, maybe you need a coach to help you know the right things to say. Now, that's a process. We're going to talk about that. But before you go to the interview, there are some things you should do at home to make sure that you're ready. Let me tell you some of the things you should do. You should make sure that you know something about the company. You should make sure that you know something about the industry. You should make sure that you know about how your skills align with the objectives of this employer. How do your skills meet the needs of the employer? If you know all of that information going into the interview, it's going to be a smoother conversation. Smoother. Because you, you know what you're going in to talk about. You're talking about the best thing you've got going. You're going to talk about you. Now, you already know that you've got to go to the interview properly dressed. So if it is a uh, office environment, you're going to wear uh, a suit perhaps, or maybe just a shirt and uh, slacks or a skirt if you're a female, or maybe you'll wear an appropriate dress. So you, you want to think about how do I want to appear when I talk to this person, this other professional Remember, you're a professional at something and they're a professional at something. This is a meeting of two professionals. You guys are getting to know one another. You're going to learn about the company and the position and, and a little bit about the person interviewing you. And they want to learn about your skills, your abilities. They want to talk to you about who you are and how you are going to fit into their environment. So please make sure that you remember Make sure that you remember 
that it is a meeting between two professionals. You've got to have information to share with this potential employer to let them know that you have done your research, that you're ready. You've got to let them know that you're ready. So before you go to their office, before you go to the interview, please do some homework. Know about the company, know about the job, know about the industry, and maybe if you have the opportunity, know a little bit about the person that you're going to interview with. When I work with a client that's going on an interview, we have some objectives. We want to know as much as we can about the company and about the um, job that they're applying for. We also want to know exactly what they know about the company, the industry, and how their skills fit into it. Obviously, what was on the resume or on the application made this company believe that you're the right fit, right? So we want to be sure that we have our story all lined up, okay? So I talk about the story. What's your story? What do you know that you're going to be able to incorporate into the conversation with this potential employer? What are you going to share with them about your skills and experience? We've got to get ready for that conversation with this potential employer. And if we do the homework, come on now. Remember when you were in school and you went to class and you guys talked about things in class and then you had to go home and do some homework to further your understanding of the classwork, right? And then, and then you came back and you turned in the homework. And the homework solidified that you understood what you learned and what you talked about. And then later on, there was a test, right? So if you do your homework, your homework is going to give you the answers to the test. The test is the interview. Are you connecting the dots here? Bring it together. The interview is the test. Now, I know people have test anxiety, but when you study, when you did both the classwork right and the homework when the test came you had less anxiety so if you know that you're a person who normally gets nervous in these testing type situations you're going to get nervous in the interview just because that's just how you react in those types of situations you've got to do more preparation on the front end you've got to make sure that you have done everything that you could do to be ready researching the industry, researching the position, and possibly researching the person. If you got this interview because because someone referred you to this company, then it's very possible that you will have the opportunity to be able to be prepared, right? Prepared for the person. If it was a friend of yours that works for the company, you want them to give you as much information as possible before you go on that interview. You want them to share with you nuances about that person. You know, we have awesome opportunities through social media and LinkedIn. I love LinkedIn. If you're not on LinkedIn, I suggest that you should. I suggest that you should. Go on LinkedIn. If you're not there, Make a profile so that you can go on to LinkedIn and not just for you, but to look up information about the company and people who work at that company, maybe people who can give you insight on the uh, environment you want. This is all research. This is all this is all before the interview. This is before you even go into the interviews before you get dressed it's not on the morning of it's the work that you should be doing before you go to the interview it's the stuff that you should be working on as you're working your way up to the interview because your resume is what got you in the door the resume and the application got you to the interview and that's right the interview is going to get you the job you gotta do the work it's working wednesday this is work that you're going to need to do when you want to get a job. Now, I'm sure you're sitting there thinking, hey, I've got a question, and I love that you have a question. I'm going to give you the number to call me. It's 813-444-9588. I'm going to say it again. 813-444-9588. 
I take calls because I want people to uh, get their questions answered. I want people to come in and ask me whatever it is that they want to ask about. Today our topic is interviews, but you can ask me anything you want to about job search because I have a four-step job search process. It begins, it begins by you networking to get the lead, filling out the application and, and dropping off your resume, and then moves into interviews. That's our topic today's interviews. And I take each one of those steps and I break those down into steps. So today we're talking about interviews. We're going to talk about what to do before the interview, what to do during the interview, and then what to do after the interview. I believe, I believe that if you break this down into steps, break it down into very workable pieces and parts, you have a greater opportunity to be successful at it. So we're, we're, we're still talking about before the interview. Why are you going on the interview? Because there's an opportunity for you as a professional to have a conversation with the professional at the company, at the company, about why you should work for them. See, you have skills and abilities that they want. That's why they're interviewing you. And it's up to you to be ready to have that conversation. Be ready to to sell yourself during the interview. Be ready to talk more about your knowledge level, your skills, and how you align with the objectives of the company. So let's just say, let's just be real simple about it. Let's just say that they're hiring for a forklift driver. And if they're hiring for a forklift driver and you have in the past worked for companies where you drove a forklift, then you're a perfect alignment, right? Right? Well, on the surface, it seems like maybe you are a perfect alignment because you have the right tactical skill. You, ha you have the task. You have the history of being successful with that task. But what else? What else are you going to bring to the table? Every company is looking for people who are a right fit, right? A right fit. So what are you going to do to convey to that employer that you're the right fit? That's why you've got to do the research. Know something about the company or know something about the industry, right? By knowing something about the company and the industry, you may be able to speak to something other than your ability to drive the forklift. You may be able to speak to some other interest in what they do as an organization during the course of the interview. This is why I recommend that you know something about the company, the industry, and possibly, possibly the person who's interviewing you so that you find opportunities to be able to say more than just, yes, I've driven a forklift before. Yes, I know the safety requirements of forklift drivers. Yes, I have a forklift license. Because they got all of that information by looking at your resume or your application. They know all of that already. What are you going to say additionally to help them to agree that you are the right fit? That's the whole point. Remember, the interview is the meeting between two professionals, yourself and the potential employer. With the potential employer could be the supervisor you're going to work for. It could be the, um, the manager of the department you're going to be working in. It could be other people who work in the department, key individuals that work in the department. It could even be the owner of the company. So you've got to prepare yourself. You've got to prepare your conversation. You've got to ensure that you have the words ready to be able to convey the message, right? That's why you've got to practice. Yeah, you got to practice while you're at home. This is the, These are the things that you're going to be doing so that you are ready for that opportunity, ready for that interview. I want you to think about that. What are you going to do before the interview? What are you going to do so that you're ready? If you have a question, I'd love to answer it for you. The number is 813-444-9588. We're getting ready to take a break. It's Working Wednesday. I'm Margaret Debalot, Miss D, the job coach, and I'll be right back.
Good morning, good morning. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Please like, share. There's Daryl. Say hi, Daryl. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Is that, is that a photo? Is that considered a photo bomb? Coach. We got the job. <laughs> yeah, coach. we getting it done, man. We getting it Let's done. Yeah, I got. But I'm on two different places. You look like a just a talking head Hello. when you do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So yes, please like and and follow and follow and share and all of that good stuff. And Other people then, want to hear this information. And then, and then did I say and then? Is that, is yes. that stick in your head? Yeah, it's stuck in my head. <laughs> hey, Lo, how are you today, love? And I see Joshua over there and Rachel's over here. Rachel is actually my classmate from Palm Coast, Florida. Rachel and I went to, uh, did we go to middle school and high school together, Rachel? That's awesome. I love social media. Are you gonna move any of the good morning, good morning, good morning. Guys, please like, share, follow, uh, yeah, yeah. invite other people somebody. to watch. No, are you gonna move any of the audio? Oh. Uh, no, uh, I'm just going to update mine, uh, put me on the mic. All the technicians in the house. Oh, yeah, where's your mic? Did I take yours? Sorry. Let's see. Seconds. I got the memo that we were wearing black and white today, but I wore a t-shirt. Oh, <laughs> see, that's not professionalism, okay? But it is. It's hashtag changing the world, baby. Oh, okay. Hashtag changing the world. <laughs> change the world. I, I keep telling people that I have a face for radio, not television. Because I look like this. Got a voice for it. y'all it's working wednesday are you ready to work i hope you are my name is margaret debalot i am miss d the job coach and we are going to work we got work to do y'all we have work to do now that everybody's here what do you mean now that everyone is in the building i am dj ceo in the building i love that the dj ceo listen he comes can in you hear me? for my can show can you hear me now yes i can hear you Good. i can hear you okay. come on up in here i'm up in here <laughs> i love it so so listen uh uh coach look coach yes i heard you coming in and uh i, I was really I, i'm really impressed with with your ability to deliver your message. Well, thank you. It's clear, it's concise, it's succinct, and it, it always drives the point home in your four-step process. It's, um, it's so very well laid out. There's absolutely no reason that anyone would have any doubt about using your services because it is just spot on. Well, thank you very much. Daryl, it comes from, uh, I'm an analyst. That, that really is the foundation of who I am. I can take something that seemingly is complicated and break it down into steps. That's how I became a professional facilitator. That's how I became a trainer. Every place that I went to work, mm -hmm. they saw that I was able to take whatever the end result was and break it down into steps and help other people to be successful at it quickly. Okay. Uh, the first job that I had that uh, appreciated my ability to do that was when I worked for the railroad. I worked for Union Pacific Technology, so we were the information channel. We were the ones who let uh, the people who had their freight mm -hmm. on our railway where their freight was. And there were many steps that you had to learn. But there wasn't a formal training process. But as I sat next to the young lady, and I'll never forget her name. Her name was Sophia Joseph. And Sophia was from Yuma, Arizona. Hey, Yuma. Yuma, Arizona. Okay. That's, and, like, that's uh, not far from Dodge City, right? I, I, I don't know. Well, we'll have to ask some of the cowboys. Yes, we'll have to. Yeah, that's and, an old man joke. You don't probably it, understand that. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah you, yeah, you would. See, if you, you didn't grow up in the Westerns when, they, when we had No, I don't like, I didn't like Westerns. I know. Okay, so all the people that are 55 and older, they understand that. 55 and older. I'm, yeah, I'm I haven't, I haven't. I, I didn't mean to infringe. I'm not them. even. No, listen, I'm not even in the 50 club yet. I, I know, I know. So so I'm I'm really 
I'm really not talking to any of your listeners because. <laughs> no, I have I have listeners at every age, every age range. To be perfectly honest. Okay. Okay. I mean, you're here with me. I am. Right. So yes. you draw a crowd. I do. Believe it or not, you do draw a crowd. Wow. I'm gonna show you one day. Okay. I'm gonna take you somewhere and I'm gonna show you how much you draw a crowd. I don't I don't think you know. Okay. But, but I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna show you. All right. So. <laughs> She, okay, so so I'm gonna tell uh, low low with the flow is following us on Facebook, and I'm gonna tell you what she said. What did she she said, "Wait a minute, DJ CEO. She might know. LOL. She said she that you cleaned it up a little bit. <laughs> she said, See, so and low I think is a little bit younger than me. Now okay. I have to tell you who low is. Low and I. Low actually gave me my first opportunity to be behind the microphone. Now, not I was a guest on the show that she's on. Okay. Uh, a show that she was on on um, community radio WMNF here in uh, Tampa okay. and she invited me on as a guest and then I went on to be on another show after that as well so low with the flow I love it thank you so much for being with us this low morning low with the flow. yeah yeah like she that. is she is actually yeah. she is actually one of my professional women's group okay. sisters from um, the uh, Tampa Bay affiliate that dress for success Tampa Bay so sure. it, listen it's it's a family affair we, we come together and this is what I mean when I talk about a network Daryl yeah you've got to build a network because people will open doors for you people will give you opportunities when I talk about going to the interview and knowing something about the interviewer mm -hmm. I mean talk to the person that refers you to the company because they may know the person who is going to interview you they right, may right. be able to give you some insight as to what that department is like they may be able to give you some insight as to the person who is interviewing you and what they're looking for mm -hmm. so uh, the, the first step the first step to job search is looking at your network who in the network can help you get to work who can refer you to a company and then give you those, those insights, that information, help you be uh, on in the know about what's really going on in the company so that when you go in, you uh, have a very robust conversation because you really understand what they're trying to do and how you really can fit into that. So it's all about networking. Um, you, you were saying, uh, I heard you say uh, coming in that um, when you are you, when you're interviewing it's two professionals right so uh, the interviewee always feels less than yes they do okay. they feel inferior exactly so so how do you change that frame of well, I do a variety of exercises with the people that I work with. When I have a client that's going on an interview, we break it down. I mean, the, the steps that I was talking about, the research and the knowing the industry and knowing who they're going to see. Um, you may have been listening to the episode where my, uh, my client Marta called in and Marta and I were able to do some amazing research on the people that she was interviewing with. We were able to see their profile on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So I was able to look at what the, the guy that she was interviewing with, what he had done, what was his career like. So I was able to determine or, or at least make an educated guess about what his his business acumen was what what's his thought process why is he he's filling this position right because he, obviously he needs somebody in this role but what is he probably going after what is he thinking about you know mm -hmm. so the research you want to research the company and the industry but you also want to know something about the person if you can if you can gain any insight and then what what Marta and I were able to do was really look at who the guy might be because it's mm -hmm. just might right we're, mm -hmm. we're making educated guesses and she felt like she was prepared and when she went in there she looked for the cues that I had shared with her the okay. conversation that she and I had and when she came out of the interview she called me and she said you were exactly right that's exactly who that guy is Wow. and and some people don't know I have a certification in behavioral interviewing and, okay. and behavioral coaching okay so I look at the behaviors of the individual both my client and potentially the behaviors that could create barriers for them when they go in yes like the nervous tick that you have <laughs> right and so when I have someone who maybe has a nervous tick mm -hmm. I don't tell them to focus on the tick I tell them to focus on the confidence they have in the information they're going to share 
Wow. Because if, if you're a per, like for somebody who has Tourette's, I have a, a, a peer and he has Tourette's. Now, that's not going away. You can't camouflage it. You can't act like it's not there. Right. But when he starts talking, you listen to the information coming out of his mouth. Yeah. And you know that he has the knowledge. And so he is capable. So when you're a person who gets nervous, mm -hmm. we work harder on what are you going to say? Yeah. What are you? What stories are you going to tell about yeah. how you've been successful in the past? Because I believe even if you don't know about the other person that you're going to be interviewing with, if you know more about yourself and what you want them to know about your skills and you're able to have that conversation smoothly, then it's just going to be there. You You'll know, be ready. Yeah, you said something that I thought was, was quite profound. If you know more about yourself. Mm hmm yeah, it, it's your confidence comes from you knowing you. Yeah, it, they're hiring you for your skills and abilities. That's the bottom line. The application or your resume told them that you had the basic skills and abilities. Right. But if you're not able to convey that to them, if you can't explain it to them, if you can't tell them in a succinct and concise manner mm -hmm. that you have done what you say you've done and that you've been successful with it, right. they're not going to believe you. They're going to think that you hired a resume writer and that sounds great, but um, can you really do it is what they want to know. I've interviewed people that I didn't believe. They, they weren't believable. They weren't believable. And they may have been telling me the truth, right. but they weren't believable. And, and that's part of it. That's that subjective stuff. Mm -hmm. People have to believe in you. Mm -hmm. They have to believe your story, no matter how crooked, sideways, and upside down it is. Right. Because people travel a journey. People live a life. And sometimes there's bumps and lumps and humps in mm -hmm. their, in their mm -hmm. career path. Well, just tell the story. Just tell it. And I, I'm a very matter-of-fact kind of person, and so that's sort of the angle, if you will, that mm -hmm. I teach. Listen, this happened and this happened, but I'm still qualified. Okay. Uh, yes, I took a hiatus. Um, yeah, maybe even maybe even I made a bad decision and ended up incarcerated because, you know, I, I work successfully with the formerly incarcerated as well. Mm -hmm. and, and I just help people be comfortable with themselves, be comfortable with their story so right. that when they go to tell it, it, it just is what it is. These are the facts, ma'am, just the facts. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So th that's what I believe makes people successful in interviews is knowing the facts. And then during the interview, they've got to be, they've got to be willing to smile. I mean, are you happy to be here? Uh, do you want to be here? Even if you're nervous, even if your nerves come out in your smile, that's fine. Is it good to like laugh out loud and maybe even snort if you laugh? If you snort when you laugh and a <laughs> laugh comes out, that's just the way you happen to laugh. Okay. I, I don't think you should be overly conscientious of your what you believe are shortcomings. Because sometimes, sometimes showing who you are will be the thing that makes you stand out. You've got the skills and the qualifications and you're a little bit quirky. Okay. Yeah. And if their environment won't if their environment will allow for that, mm -hmm. then you're the right fit. But if you're quirky and mm -hmm. their environment won't allow for it, and it's the reason that they don't hire you, then it's better for you. Wow. Okay. Because, I mean, who wants to work somewhere where they don't feel they, comfortable? Yeah, exactly. Uh, <clears throat> that's the subjective stuff that you can't do anything about. Um, I've had clients tell me, well, you know, I'm kind of this or I'm kind of that. And I go, okay. Is that going to change in the next, you know, two weeks to 30 days? And no. no, but I can help you to be more confident about your story. I can help you to be, to choose the right words to convey your message. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to take a lot of notes and you're going to do a bunch of homework. And, and that's great. But the little idiosyncrasies that you have are probably not going to go away. And they're what, make you, what makes you unique. And perhaps right. they're the reason why I should hire you because you're going to bring something different. You know, that's the diversity conversation. We, wow. we don't want to have a staff that looks like exactly the same thing. And if it's not a company that's willing to embrace diversity, then maybe it's not the place for you. Really? Yeah, I, I never tell people that they should try to fit every single aspect of uh, somebody else's box. You don't have to get in their box. I can, I can come to work at your company and not look like every single person in your staff mm. if you agree 
Right. That's it. If you agree, if they agree to, to take you on, then good. Be you and show up and do your best work every single day. Because that's what they really hired you for was the work. Jeez. Yes, mother. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I have two oh, sons. Geez. So I do probably come across with a little, God, you know, the geez. mother tone I as know. well. And You know what? Yeah. Well, I'll be honest with you. Daryl, which I'm honest with you all the time when I talk with you, but okay. one of the things that I think is important is for us to know why we're doing it. You know, I remind people all the time that I do this because when I sat on the other side of the desk interviewing people, I said if I ever had the chance to tell people what to do in interviews, to tell people how to perform better in interviews, I was absolutely going to do that. And when I came um, to Tampa, when I came it arrived at this place where I needed to reinvent myself. That's what I focused on. I focused on telling people the things that I always wanted to tell them when they interviewed with me. People made mistakes in front of me in interviews, and I wished so badly that I could tell them that to never, ever do that again. And so mm -hmm. uh, today I can tell people, don't do that. That's not going to work out well for you. So. Wow. So today I do it, and, and I love it, and I have a bunch of fun with it. And um, I was texting a client over the weekend. I seen a video. I watch a lot of uh, YouTube videos, and, and I saw this video that I thought would encourage my client, and I sent it to them on Saturday. Now, this client is in the middle of their uh, an interview cycle right now. They mm -hmm. went to the first interview. The first interview was a phone interview, and there were some areas that they would like to have done better, but we can't go redo it. We're going to be more prepared going forward. That's what we decided. Mm -hmm. But, of course, because you're anxious and you have all those feelings and you are in your head and all these different things that we do to ourselves, that's what my client was doing to themselves. And when mm -hmm. I saw the window of opportunity to send them something encouraging, I did over the weekend, and they text me back and said, oh, my God, thank you so much for sending me that video. That was a huge help to me. Wow. So wow. I got them through the weekend. Yes. Yeah. I wasn't going to talk to them until Monday. But when you when you do something that you love and you're totally invested in it, it I don't have hours. Right. I do what I do. I hear you. All the time. It's working Wednesday. I'm Miss D, the job coach on working Wednesday. We'll be right back. What time did you get started? About. Let's see. To Lyle, the live will tell me how long I've been on. We've been on for 35 minutes and 27 seconds. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. 35 minutes. Okay. Okay. So I need to email about 10 hours. How are you today? Do you have a bunch of amazing things to get done? I do. I really, really do. Good. Um, we were here late last night. Good. Yeah. I was working. Working. Yeah, working. Like late night working. Yeah, working. So we are uh, building some templates and doing a lot of things. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Fun, fun, fun. quite a few more late nights ahead of us. Um, if you work in something, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what work is, you know, early mornings and late nights. Listen, I came up I came up in business with people that I don't think we really slept at all. Those were in the in the 90s. I don't think I slept very much. But I was a whole bunch younger, you know. I know. I know. <laughs> Ten seconds. It's working Wednesday, y'all. I'm Margaret Debalot, Miss D, the job coach, and it is Wednesday. We got to go to work. Got to go to work. Got to go to work. Listen, one of the reasons why we have working Wednesday is because Wednesday is the toughest day. It's the toughest day when you're job searching. Monday, you were all excited. Tuesday, maybe you had an interview. Wednesday is the humpy day of the week. And you said, forget it. I'm staying. And then if you got up in Tampa today, it was 50-something degrees. And you said, I'm staying in the bed. I'm not doing a doggone thing. What did you say? It was 57 degrees. It was 54 degrees out 
on my side of town. Okay, so, I mean, a little chill. Uh huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. You it know, it was eighty degrees yesterday, Daryl. Really? Yes, it was. Right. You know, if if fifty four degrees, you know, our uh, our uh, producer over there behind the glass, Stephen. Mm -hmm. You know, he's gonna put on like uh, four coats, three pairs of boots, and a uh, and and a head wrap. Because mm -hmm. it's too cold. Exactly. I agree with them. <laughs> Jesus. You should have seen me. I got my three miles in this morning, Jesus. and I had you, a scarf around my neck. But you, you were outside this morning? Yes, I was. I got up and got to work, honey. It's Wednesday. What is wrong with you? Not a thing. I you, was you upright and ready. You walked three run I walked. I walked. My knees said, you better walk. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I get three miles thing. in several days a week. I'm proud of you. No, this listen, I mind am. body and mind body and mind body and spirit. I'm I'm working on all of it. That deserves some applause. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you so much. And let me so let me in, let me interject this. It was really interesting this morning because I was walking and uh I was looking at okay, so some people know I get up about four four or four thirty in the morning. What? And I have a, a Facebook show that comes on on my personal page okay. called Margaret in the Morning. Okay. So we I did Margaret in the morning. What time does that start? That comes on at six AM. Six AM, okay. Six AM. And so after the show goes off, I go and I get my three miles in and I watch the show while I'm doing my walk okay. to put in any comments and, and stuff like that. It's a whole Facebook thing. Mm -hmm. Anywho, anywho, there was this woman and she was out with her hand weights and she was walking, right? right. And I saw, I saw her and then as I went around the corner, she and I met up again. And okay. I said to her, who turned the heat off outside? I don't know who did that. <laughs> Somebody turned the heat off out here and I need to see somebody. And so she and I chuckled about that. And come to find out, she is actually from Germany. Wow. Yeah, she's from Germany. And, and so we had a little conversation about the differences in weather and that sort of thing. And then we also had a conversation about the fact that living in Florida makes you a little soft. It does. Right? And I told her that I was originally not from Florida, but I live in Florida because I don't care for the cool weather. I, I really, I don't. I don't like the winter. But she talked about mm -hmm. the fact that Germany, it's not just that it's cool, it's that it's dreary and and and, and you get uh, just dreary and no sun and no blue sky. And so it's a whole different atmosphere. It's a whole different situation there in Germany. So uh, we talked about that just a little bit. And Daryl, so here is the thing that I was just stunned about when I, when I was talking to this woman. What, what was that? She said, I told her that I do a lot of Facebook. She says, oh, I'd love to connect to you on Facebook. And so we agreed to do that. And I got my phone and I got ready to, to put her name in. And what happened? Her name is Margaret. Wow. That was funny. Okay, okay. That was hilarious that her name was Margaret. But she, so she, her name is Margaret, but she has an extra E on the end of her Margaret. And then she spelled her name for me. And so now we're Facebook friends. So my new friend Margaret and yeah. I, uh, she said, well, do you come out every morning? And I said, well, about three to five mornings uh, a week. And she That's said, it. oh, around the same time. So I imagine Margaret and I are going to see each other again. The two M's. The two M's. And we frequent the same coffee shop. And okay. we're neighbors. Okay. We're neighbors. So she's, that's nice. She's not a job coach, is she? She's not a job she's coach. She's probably in HR. She might be. <laughs> <laughs> she might be. As I get to know Margaret, I will find out what she does. No, I, actually, I think she works for a car lot. I think that's what I saw on her. So she probably, okay. well, she may buy and sell cars, or maybe she just works on the lot. I don't know. Okay. Okay. But, but that's how you build your network. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. how you build your network. You get to know people. I, I met someone out on the parking lot. Her first name escapes me. I'll see her again. And she just started talking to her. And, out here? Yeah, out here. Okay. on the parking lot and mm -hmm. uh people say this to me but i have something called the 10 foot rule what's that the 10 foot rule is if you're within 10 feet of me and you return my glance i'm probably going to start a conversation with you oh, okay that's my sales background okay. um, when i actively prospected ten every feet. day mm -hmm. yeah if you're within 10 feet and if you're you know personable and, mm. and people respond to me in different ways sometimes they throw things at me but that's okay i've learned to duck I, I, it's okay. <laughs> but I, you made me think about George Bush when you said that. Really? Okay, yeah. you got to tell me that. I don't know about... George W. Oh, 
Yeah, you know, you know when he was over in uh, in Iran, I believe. Somebody threw a shoe at him. Two shoes. Oh no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He had to duck twice. Oh wow! Oh wow! Yeah, that was one of the times that, that I thought, um, you know, I, I didn't I didn't really particularly like George Bush. I didn't dislike him, but um, at any rate, I thought that was so disrespectful, man. They really didn't like him. Oh, they really didn't. So for like those him. of you who don't know about the custom, it in, in in the Middle East. In the Middle East, if they don't like you, they'll throw a they'll shoe. They'll throw at a you. shoe at you. Yeah. Yes, yes. That, that's that's one of the um, ultimate. Forms of disrespect or Absolutely. dislike, yeah, yes, to, to throw a shoe at you. Now, right. see, if you're from the South and your mama threw shoes at you, that's a whole nother you conversation. Know you was in real trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so, so maybe, maybe, maybe Southern mothers knew something about that. Maybe. You <laughs> Tear maybe. you up with these shoes. I hit one of my daughters with, with, a, with a house shoe. <laughs> you <laughs> I, did? I did. I threw it. Pow. Wow. Yeah, I sure did. Did that, <laughs> did that turn out badly for anybody? No, other it than didn't. Her? No, okay. it didn't. She was, <laughs> she was a little, you know, you know her. Her ego was bruised. Yeah. That's about all. Yeah. You know. I've, I've never had. I I didn't grow up in that environment. I corporal punishment wasn't really a thing at my house. Well, we did we not spare the rod. I can tell you that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know that. It was yeah. just different. We didn't. Yeah. Th- we had silent expectations at my house. It was. Wow. It was. Yeah. It was a whole bunch of different. It was. It was. Di- it was. Yeah, it was just different. That's what it was. <laughs> it was silent expectations at my silent house. And my sons know what that means. My sons would just look at each other and go, mm-mm, mm-mm, don't mm. do that. Mm-mm, mm. don't, mm-mm, don't. And okay. tell their friends, mm-mm, don't do that, you know. Okay. So it's different in different places. And so we know that if we go to the Middle East, if somebody reaches for a shoe, it's not yeah. going to go well. Well, it's probably a little more severe, too, in the Middle East because, you know, they'll cut your hand off or stone you to death or, you know, stuff like that. I don't think we're quite that bad. No, no, <laughs> no, not quite that not bad. Quite that not bad. quite that bad, but they will fire you and put you on the outside if you don't act right. Absolutely. That you know, and and now I'm I'm gonna, since I since I put that in there, I'm gonna segue into how to handle the question about how you left a former employer if you were fired. Oh, Pe- okay. People get fired. It it does happen. Uh, and if you are comfortable with the firing, mm-hmm. and, and, and when I say comfortable with the firing, because oftentimes when I am talking to a client that was fired from an employment situation, it was already a bad situation between them and their supervisor, and it came to a head one day, and they just said, okay, today is your last day, you need to go. And so... I usually help the person to work through their feelings first about the firing. Okay. And then select the appropriate words. So if you were let go from a position, mm-hmm. sometimes I tell people, they say, oh, well, why did you leave working for ABC? My supervisor and I came to a point where it was no longer a good fit for either of us. And so we parted ways. Okay. That was good. I got fired is probably not what you want to say. Wow. You or or you might say I'm no longer eligible for hire with that company. Wow, I don't know if that sound good. It doesn't. It doesn't. And I some am stuff no can't sound good. For yeah, I'm, I'm cuz some employers will ask you. Would they hire you? Why back? haven't you Yeah, why haven't you gone back to that job? Oh, I you got know, you. if if it was such a great job, why haven't you gone back there? Well, I'm yeah. no longer eligible. To be hired by that organization. Okay. You know, maybe something changed in your life. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, but finding the right words. And it really starts, when I'm working with somebody who has that situation, it really, really starts with them and how they feel about the situation, how it transpired, uh, what their opinions are of mm-hmm. that previous employer. And you have to be very candid without sharing details that are not relevant. People sometimes are in a situation where they still have so much feelings attached to what led up to them being fired that they're not constructive in that conversation. So how do you respond to, you know, the question that that follows your statement, which is, well, tell me, what happened? I learned a lot from that situation. I learned that when certain guidelines are in place, there are things that are uh, minor infractions and there are things that are major infractions. So the situation that I had was that I 
handed out paychecks to some of the employees because they showed up. And my, my, my supervisor wasn't there. My supervisor usually did it. I had been doing a lot of my supervisor's duties. My supervisor did not directly instruct me not to hand out the paychecks. But what I realized was that when it came to dealing with the money and the chain of command as, as it pertained to the money of the organization, that was looked at a lot more seriously than just me filling out paperwork mm-hmm. or uh, giving out work assignments. And so I learned the boundary between uh, different roles. And okay. so now going forward, what I learned is that I'll ask if my supervisor has me do a lot of their uh uh, duties for mm-hmm. them, I will simply ask where the the line is, okay. so that so I learned from that situation. It was okay. very painful. I'll be honest; it was painful for me at the time that it happened, but I learned. So, so you should practice uh, uh, a second response if, if necessary. Absolutely, absolutely. We we practice everything. We practice good, better, best is the technique that I use for the situation, action, result responses, the stories that you're going to tell when they ask the questions. Tell me about a time when you did, uh, had to do a job and you had a little instruction. Tell me about a, the time that you did a job and you didn't know what you were supposed to be doing. You hadn't had adequate training. You know, mm-hmm. These things come out in interviews and you have to have those stories to be able to tell. And you have to be able to tell them in such a way that it conveys to the potential employer that you understand the boundaries, you understand steps that you need to take in these situations. They want to get an idea of who you are and how you deal with things. It's important for you to be candid and details, but to leave out things that show a negative emotion Mm -hmm. on your part. Mm -hmm. You know, well, they did that and I got mad. Well, okay, well, you got mad and then what happened? So so you want to leave out things that are not going to convey you in a positive light and to things that you made a mistake and you made a mistake and you learned. Okay. I okay. think that's a, I think that's appropriate because everybody doesn't have perfect histories to share, you know. There's the good, the bad and the indifferent. Now if you have nothing but see, good stories to tell. See, you missed the opportunity again. What which to throw the shoe at you? No, oh. to 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 refer to the uh to the western movie. Oh. It's the good, the bad and the ugly. Oh, you yeah. said indifferent. Yes. I'm so disappointed. <laughs> I don't gonna, say the good, bad, you, and the ugly. Because I'm not going to call you ugly, Daryl. Well, not to your face. But it's a movie. It's <laughs> oh, a that's right. Western movie. <laughs> Dang. I'm too young. You're too young. I'm too young to talk about the Man, Western movies. <laughs> no, the good. I can't believe you I, missed I, I actually, that. No, I didn't miss it. I, I actually <laughs> modified. I, no, I knew about the good, the bad, and the ugly. Okay. And so I, I tell people the good, the bad, and the indifferent. You just had to put your little twist on it, didn't yes, you? Yes, I made it my own. Okay, that's And right. I've said it more than three times. I don't have to give them credit for it. So i got a question for you. Sure. Did you cut your device on today? I, no, I don't have to cut the device on. Is it plugged up? Uh, yeah, I think it is. Okay. I, I plugged in my end. I okay. hope that yeah, they the, plugged the other in. end is... Okay. okay. But is it on? I don't... Well, I don't know. It looks like it's on. Is it looks like it's on? Yeah. We still don't even know what the device does, well, do we? I think it really reaches across... Uh, it's, it's intergalactical. It's intergalactical. <laughs> it, it brings us into the space. <laughs> it brings space and time. It's, if you uh, turn it on, Daryl, it's going to make old. a wormhole and we're it's both going to disappear out of here. <laughs> I love this place. I love this place. I do. I love this place. Okay, and for those okay. of you who are just joining us, this is Working Wednesday. I miss D the job coach. That's the DJ CEO I am over DJ there. DJ CEO. <laughs> I That's don't it. know what he's talking That's about. <laughs> We're trying to get jobs Man. here, and he's taking us to outer space and it's down okay. to Western movies. Okay. I got to talk to Tammy. Does she okay. have these kinds of problems trying to talk to you too? No, 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 <laughs> no, because she keeps no. you in. No, she's throwing shoes at me. That's, she probably does throw <laughs> shoes at you. I've, I've probably I've seen her shoes. Does she has good shoes? Oh, don't make oh, her yeah. don't make her throw those make good shoes at you. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> Listen, one of the things that I enjoy about being an entrepreneur is that I can have more fun than a little bit. And I can work with people that I enjoy being with and have fun with. And and I think that's part of what life is about. 
is doing things that you love and doing things you're passionate about and, and having a good time. I mean, we know that life is tough and we know that things are going to happen and we know that we've got to live this life and none of us is getting out alive. But I think you've got to find those opportunities to have a good time even when you're at work. Wow. So yeah. true. Yeah. One of the reasons why I followed the journey to become a trainer when I worked in corporate America was because I needed a job that allowed me to talk for a living, basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because, That's a good thing. yeah, talking is something that I do. I, I had missed my opportunity to get into radio before, and uh, so I became a professional facilitator, facilitating curriculums for Fortune 500 companies, recruiting for Fortune 500 companies. Mm -hmm. I've traveled all over the country delivering training and things of that nature and teaching people how to improve their situation and whatever it is that they're doing. So I love what I do now. I love that I've been able to bring it to the air. And uh, thank you very much for facilitating this opportunity with me. My pleasure. Absolutely, my pleasure. So, so, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Well, I can't, so my my uh, next question is, so I got the interview. Mm -hmm. I did well. Yes. At least I think I did well. Of course you did. I followed your instructions. Everything you told me to do in the interview, I did. Okay. I picked up on the cues. Okay. And when I left there, I really felt good about it. Okay. But... Three weeks later, I hadn't heard from them, and then finally, three and a half weeks later, they call and say, I got a second interview. That's amazing. It is? Yes, that's exciting. I'm shaking like a leaf. Okay, good. And what do I do? Well, I'm so glad that you did that little segue for me there, because after that interview, Daryl, if you had had a coach... If you had hired Miss D to job coach, it wouldn't have been three weeks before you had an interface with, with that potential employer because I would okay. have encouraged you to get information to follow up with the employer after the interview. There's some questions you should ask at the end. You should ask when they're going to fill the position, okay. what the next steps are, okay. and when should you look forward to hearing from them. Okay. So if you had asked those things, you may or may not have had to wait on pins and needles for three weeks. Sometimes you still do, but we want to increase the opportunity for you to have interface with them and, and know what's going on. So yeah. you ask those three questions. And, and knowing that reduces uh, the anxiety that you will have waiting. That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. Sometimes it makes them even get to you faster because you are doing the active follow-up. Okay. So because you found out that they're going to decide within two weeks, mm -hmm. then you should have probably called them after two weeks and asked the questions. You should have either called or emailed, try to keep the line of communication going because the more you know, the less anxious you are. And I also encourage you to keep looking and keep submitting applications for other jobs because that's great that you got that interview, but what if three weeks went by and you didn't get it and you didn't have something else in the hopper? Okay. I always recommend that you keep looking keep even looking. after going to that interview. Okay. So once you know that you've gotten a second interview, now we need to prepare for that interview. That's scary. No, it's not. Yeah. We're not, we're not scared. Scared people. What? Go to church. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, That's geez. what came to my head when you're scared. You go to church, yeah, go right? To church. So, church. listen. No, we're not going to be scared. We're not okay. going to be afraid. We're not going to be concerned because we know that we're ready. We're, we're ready, right? We're ready. the The second interview may be interview with other people. So now we're going to prepare for an, a panel interview. So if gotcha. the first time you had the interview it was with one person, or uh -huh. maybe the first interview was a phone interview, now we're maybe going back for a panel interview where you're going to be talking to more people, which is excellent. It's excellent. But okay. again, more people, more opportunity for you to be nervous, all of that. And so we'll spend time preparing for that interview. We'll talk about what possibly, uh, what more you okay. could possibly talk about. Uh, you'll also look at what do other people want to know? So okay. maybe you interviewed with the supervisor initially. Now maybe you have to interview with 
the department head and an HR person maybe mm -hmm. and somebody from another department that has some say on on the hiring process so now you're going to think about what additional information we can share with them about who you are and maybe talk more about your goals and aspirations what is it that you see yourself doing with that organization in the long term you know we look at what else can you share with them that makes you the right person for that job that's it okay wow so the follow-up is a really big part of it the follow-up and being ready being ready to talk more about who you are so that you can get the job. The whole point of all of this is for you to get the job. If you don't already follow me on social media, please follow me. You can find me on Twitter. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Instagram and LinkedIn. You can find me as at MSD, as in David, the job coach. Miss D, the job coach. I'm going to give you my direct phone number as well. My direct phone number is area code 704-277-8712. Don't go through this process alone. Get yourself a coach. It is Working Wednesday. We have come to an end. Thank you so much. I will see you next week. Thank you so much for joining us here on social media. Please share this video. Share, 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 because sharing is caring. Thank you so much. Hey, Angelica Cole, thank you so much for being with us. Have a wonderful day. See you next time.